Hi everyone, just going to take a few minutes here to give you a quick demo of IBM Copy Services Manager with DS8000 Safeguarded Copy. So just a quick reminder, DS8000 Safeguarded Copy is a cyber resiliency solution for DS8000 that can store up to 500 backups ensuring that your data is protected and safe, uh, that, that data is stored in a, a non-addressable storage, can't be accessed uh, directly, you can recover to it, uh, but using IBM Copy Services Manager, well, you'll see that uh, we've made it quite simple to set up and use. So let, let me drill into it. So this is IBM Copy Services Manager login. I'll go ahead and log in. You go to this, you know, the overview screen, go into the sessions. So now I want to, I'm starting from scratch, I want to create a safeguarded copy session. I'll say create session. I'm going to choose the DSA 1000 solution session type. You'll scroll down and you'll see safeguarded copy. Uh, select that. I'm going to ask to create a name. I'm just going to call it ASGC, mostly because A will filter to the top, but uh, it will start with that. So the first thing I'm going to be asked is to launch the add copy set wizard so I can choose the volumes I want to add. I'm going to go into the wizard, and it, what it will do is ask you for both the host volumes. Those are the H1 volumes are the ones you're going to back up, so those are the ones you're actually going to safeguard. And then it's going to ask you to choose the R1 volumes, which are the recovery volumes. So those are the volumes you'll use to recover a backup to so that you can actually uh, you know, access it and address it. It doesn't affect the actual backed up image. That's still a non-addressable space. Can't be deleted, can't be accessed. But it moves it to addressable storage so that you can do any forensic testing, etc. on a given backup. Uh, we do in CSM require you to have a recovery volume for every session. Uh, but uh, you'll you'll just you know, if you set it up as a space efficient volume, it won't take up any extra space unless you're actually using it. And I'll show you towards the end how to do a quick recovery. Uh, for on for you know expediency, I already have some copy sets defined, so I'm going to import them from a CSV file. You'll see that it, I selected these volumes on LSS40, and just to and I'll go ahead and. You know, and the recovery volumes are in LSS 50. So let's finish this up, go through the add. They got added successfully. Uh, but you'll, you'll need to note that uh, each of these volumes that uh, I choose to create safeguarded copy on, you will need to define backup capacity for on the DS8000 first. Uh, so if, um, now in the DS8000 GUI, uh, remember, I chose the 40 LSS 40 range, so you'll see that these are already set up with safeguarded virtual capacity. Um, they they have no recovery or nothing yet, but they're they're set up uh, for that. So you would just you know you can ch change that now. You can uh, delete the capacity, add the capacity, but that's how you would go. You'd go into here, define your capacity. Once it has capacity, then you're set up. Uh, for backups. I'm not going to go into the details of the DS8000 side. Uh, there are other demos or uh, presentations that cover that. I'm just going to go over back to CSM to show you how, how that works there. So now I'm going to drill into my ASGC session that you remember I created. You'll see that it has the three copy sets. Go back and see them. There they are. Now first things first, I'm going to define properties on this session. Bring up the properties dialog and just an overview of what these properties are. So the first one is expire backup on auto roll. That is not set by default, and what it is is it uh, will, it, you know, it, on the hardware, if you run out of space for a given volume, because each volume has their own backup capacity defined, but if you run out of space on a given volume, the hardware will roll off an older version of an older backup in order to make room for the new backup. Um, if your volumes happen to have different capacity set or something, it is possible that one set, one volume might uh, roll while the other ones don't. Um, that makes the backup as a whole across the session not usable because not all the volumes are really recoverable. Um, however, it, you may still want to do forensics on individual volumes. So by default, we'll still while well, we'll show the backup is not recoverable across all the volumes, we'll still keep the backup for those volumes by default so that you could recover it, do forensics, etc. However, if you decide that, you no, know, 
it's if they're not all if they don't all have a backup then it's no good to me you can check the expire backup on auto roll and what it will do is if one of the volumes rolls they all roll will CSM will go and expire that particular backup for all the volumes so that it's consistent across all the volumes but again that's not checked by default the next one is your minimum time frame per backup so what this value does is it actually prevents a malicious user from corrupting the data and then doing multiple backups simultaneously uh, until that backup that uh, actually has the corrupted data has rolled off all the other backups. So if you define a minimum time frame for backup, that's telling the, the session that uh, it can only backup every so many minutes. So in this case, the default's 30. It will only allow a backup command to happen every 30 minutes. If you try to do it at a, you know, five minutes after the last backup, the backup command will fail. All right, and then last is your retention period. So this is your the, the time that you'll tell CSM to auto expire uh, older backups. So in this case, let's, for this demo purposes, let's say a day. So uh, I'm going to roll off a backup every, you know, the oldest backup every day. So if it's, if if the backup is older than a day, uh, it will automatically be expired and no longer be uh, usable. It will no longer display in CSM or et cetera. All right, uh, we also have some backup. So this is when you recovery. You can set that to no copy or persistent now, but uh, we'll, we'll save that for later. All right, I've saved off my properties. And now what I really, I have my volumes, I set up my properties. Now what I, you know, most customers do, I mean, I could, go in and create a backup manually. You can backup manually all you want. Uh, you could even create an external scheduler uh, and back it up that way. Say it's off of a batch job, you can set up BPX batch on ZOS, for example, to kick off uh, a batch. And then once it's done, have it have that call BPX batch to kick off a backup. So there's multiple ways you can, you can actually uh, run a backup on, on uh, a safeguarded copy session. However, for this demo, I'm going to show you uh, CSM scheduling capabilities because that's what the majority of customers are actually using out there. So if we'll click on right here, go to no schedule, whoop, that pops up the wizard for the schedule. So I'm going to say uh, backup AGC session. I'm going to click next. On the next tab, it lets you define how often you want it to backup. So I can choose an hourly schedule so it can back up up to, you know, every 24 hours, two days, three days, four days, five days, etc. Or I could set a schedule that will say every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I want it to back up at, uh, you know, let's say 12 a.m. when nothing's running. So it doesn't affect anything. Or I say no schedule and yeah, there, that can be used to manage coordination with other things uh, and externally calling the backup. So for this demo, let's go ahead and say, I want to back up every hour. So I'm going to back up every hour, but I sent my retention to a day. So I should have uh, 24 backups that uh, I, I keep uh, to meet my service level requirements. All right, so I'm going to click next. Here you'll see the action. You'll see that the action this scheduled task is going to do is issue a backup. But uh, this is very simple. Maybe you're just backing up a set of volumes. Uh, in other environments, you may have a much more complex solution. Maybe you have a global mirror session, you want to back up the global mirror secondaries. So for global mirror, you actually have to suspend global mirror to get a consistent copy of the secondaries before you could do the backup. Well, you can do that in the scheduled task. You just simply select the session, say suspend, add that action to the scheduled task before you do the backup. Uh, you probably have another one for we're waiting for the state to reach a suspended state, etc. But that backup task, this the scheduled task will now do all those things prior to doing the backup and then restart the session after. For this demo, again, I'm keeping it very simple. I'm just doing a straight up backup, uh, and that's what it's already set for. You don't have to make any changes. Now I have my scheduled, you know, summary. It's going to back up every hour. It's going to back up AGSGC session. Uh, even tells you in text format that's issued back up to ASGC. I'm going to say finish. Okay. And now you'll see that it's, it says backup every one hour. Um, but by default, we don't enable that schedule because we don't know when you want to set it or enable it. So you can click on that link. Uh, you'll see that scheduled task that you created here. 
and now I can go drop down and enable it. Um, I can enable it two different ways. I can enable it now, which means just immediately right at this time frame, go ahead and enable that schedule, or at a specified time. So if I see it at a specified time, let's go ahead and say, hey, I want to do it. Mm, let's do it late at night when, uh, you know, right before midnight, let's say 11 p.m., um, so that uh, I know that, you know, most of my business stuff is, is not running right now, so I'll schedule it for then. Say yes, enable it, say yes, and now you'll see in that scheduled task, it'll tell you when it's next going to run. It's going to run tonight at 11 p.m. Um, after it runs at 11 p.m., you'll see the uh, next run time. Uh, we did it hourly, so the next one will be 12 a.m., uh, and it'll show you that 11 p.m. is the last run time. So it'll just keep going until you end up disabling it if you choose to, etc. in the future. But let's go back to our session. Now you'll see again, it's set for backup, it's set every hour, everything's enabled, we're good, uh, and uh, you'll get those backups every hour starting at 11 p.m. tonight. But for the purposes of demo, let's do one manually so you can see what it looks like. We'll do the backup. Yes. That's now issuing the backup command to the CSM, uh, to the hardware, uh, creating that backup, and there it is. So now we show the backup time. This is when we issue the backup command. It has a backup ID. We know it's recoverable, and it all backed up successfully. If I want to drill in and see details, I can click on that link, and it's going to show me all the volumes are in the backup. Why do we do this? Well, you can manage the session, you know, as it grows. Maybe you add new volumes into the session. Maybe, you know, you had more requirements. The application needs a new volume. You carve that new volume. You want it protected. You throw it into this session. Well, the older backups will still be part of those uh, other volumes that existed prior to adding that volume, but the new one won't have those backups. So you'll be able to go back and actually see the number of copy sets, number of volumes that were contained in a given backup. Uh, so that you'll know whether all the backup, all the volumes, all the copy sets are in the session are part of that of a given backup. Um, it also lets you, in case, in the event that one of the volumes failed in a backup, you'll be able to go in here and actually see the error message for a given volume, uh, even though other ones might have been successful. All right, now um, I have different options from there. I can actually expire that backup manually if I wanted to. That'll tell me I'll expire in it, um, and it will expire it, uh, everything, that backup and everything older um, based off the way the DS8000 works, so you only have to select one backup and anything older than that will expire. Not going to do that now, I'm just showing that. But the other one I want to show you is the recover. So now I'm going to recover backup. There's the, uh, I'm going to select the backup to recover. Click yes. And he's going to go ahead and do uh, a backup. Uh, he's going to do the recovery of the backup, and you'll see that uh, it will move the create those recovery uh, relationships on the LSS 5.0 volumes that we had specified when we add the copy sets. So now the session is in a target available state. So when it's target available versus protected, you know that uh, you do have recovery volumes out there that you can go use. So now I can go attach a host to these LSS 50 volumes um, uh, and do my forensics, look at the backup, see maybe there's a data set that I want uh, that's corrupted. You can find that data set that's corrupted, uh, restore a data set uh, from a, that's not corrupted to, uh, that was corrupted before and restore it manually. Uh, but there's the recovery relationships. You can see the background copy and the percent of the background copy running in CSM. We make everything very visual from that recovery backup info tab uh, and make it very easy for you to, to look at. Uh, other points, we have the recovery, uh, the last recoverable backup time and last recovered two times. So those are the times um, you uh, last recovered it and the last, uh, the last time you actually did a backup. Uh, if you no longer need the recovery relationships, you can terminate H1R1, that's your recovery role. Do not do the terminate command. The terminate will wipe out all backups across all volumes in the session. But if you don't need the recovery relationship anymore, you can just say terminate H1R1. And now those recovery relationships, now those volumes are freed up. Those LSS50 volumes are freed up. The space for those volumes are freed up. 
uh, now you just have your backups remaining. Um, you'll note that uh, there are there is an extra backup here that ha that uh, was created when I did the recovery. That's because on uh, some levels of DS8000, you can't recover the latest backup. You have to create a new backup in order to do the recovery of the, the last backup. So that was automatically generated by CSM uh, when you did the recovery. All right, so hopefully you can see this is very easy um, in terms of managing it. Uh, just one more thing I'm going to touch on briefly. I'm not going to really show you, but I'll touch on it. But we actually have uh, the ability to enable dual control on the session. So when you enable dual control on a, on the uh, well the server, I should say, um, it further locks down the uh, the um, abilities of the session. So if you really you know how we talked about, bring it up again. Now we talked about this uh, minimum time frame per backup. Well, it's a property in the session. If an admin has the ability to change that and they're the malicious user, they could easily go and set that to zero, uh, save it off, and then now they could still, uh, you know, roll off the, the all the way to the, all the good data until all you have is corrupted data. So what you want to do is enable dual control. Uh, dual control in the CSM session uh, will make it so that two users have to approve any action. Uh, you know, any additional user has to approve any action. So if someone went into view modify properties, somebody else would have to say, yeah, that, I approve that change and uh, and click it. Um, if they don't approve it, then that action doesn't get issued. It just sits there. Uh, and so it makes it very hard for malicious users to go and um, manipulate any of your safeguarded copy environment. So if you're using safeguarded copy, we highly suggest you use dual copy, I mean dual control. Um, uh, I can do another demo later on dual control if there's interest, uh, but I wanted to focus primarily on safeguarded copy for this thing. So hopefully that gives you a quick overview, quick view and demo of safeguarded copy with CSM. Uh, we've made it as easy as possible uh, in order for you to manage up to your fi those 500 copies that you could create for volumes based off of your the backup capacity you've uh, associated to each volume. Thank you for your time.